Okay, hi. I want to send a, send a special thanks out to Jack for uh, pointing out that uh, I really should have wound the inductor on the lower part down here because what happened... Let, let's take a look here. So if um, I leave the inductor up here, I was thinking, well, if I turn it clockwise, it will increase the frequency. That's true. It will make it a little bit more convenient. But see, there's a steel rod here, and that's going to add inductance to this middle part, so I'm just replacing um, the big ferrite inductor with a smaller one. And so uh, if I put it down here, it'll be replacing the air core with a big inductor, so it should have a much better uh, re uh, performance, basically, a, a bigger swing between the lowest inductance and the highest inductance. And plus, I don't know what kind of loss is this, you know, the, typically the ferrite cores have very low loss of when you have put RF frequencies into them, but these iron cores are not guaranteed to have low loss because they are conductive, much more conductive than the, the ferrite cores. Ferrite cores are made to be non-conductive, so they have very little ohmic loss. So let me um, rewind these wires, because it's so much fun rewinding. Again, thanks Jack. You're absolutely right. We need to uh, do things right here. Okay. That's good. It looks like I was able to slide these coils down just by wiggling them, so I didn't have to rewind them. And uh, so let's let's take some measurements now that I have the coils. See, so as Jack was pointing out, the rod is in this region and it's magnetic, and so it will change the inductance of the coils. Where here, when the rod's not in here, it's going to be air, so it'll be going from air to uh, the giant duck, uh, the giant uh, ferrite core, and here it's just replacing the uh, ferrite core with a lesser uh, magnetic uh, material, but not not air. So we should have a bigger effect now. So I moved it down to the the marks that I put on there before, and let's let's measure this and see how it comes out. Okay. Okay. So I have slid the coils down from up here. To down here, <clears throat> so now the the core will not be interfering anymore. This this uh, threaded rod, and um, well, actually, right now I've I'm sorry I've slid the coils down, and I have the the core all the way up here. So the core is in this section. Okay, because remember we had the core up here, and as Jack pointed out, um, this threaded rod would be in this section, so it would be interfering with the inductance, or raising the inductance a little bit. So before we measured, uh, what was it, 79 microhenries on our video before, and it looks like it's down to 71, so it looks like a, a, this uh, iron uh, threaded rod, or steel threaded rod, did, did uh, bring up the inductance a little bit, but not too much. Okay. So, um, I guess it didn't affect the performance too much, but it would have more losses and stuff, so it's probably better to have the coils, you know, not, not around the rod here. So, okay, so this is the low inductance, and let me measure the high inductance to make sure this thing is still working properly. Get some of this garbage out of here. There we go. Okay. Let's see if I can get this in frame. There we go. Clip leads on and everything. Okay. Okay, so I have this almost all the way in, and I think that's pretty close to what I had before. Let's see, I think I wrote down here five, 538, and we're at 523. Let's twit a little, little bit more. So maybe the coils aren't in the exact best optimum position. Maybe I'll twiddle them around some more. Yeah, it looks like the maximum is occurring before it gets uh, all the way down to the bottom. So, well, there we go, 530, that's about what I had before. Let me twiddle the coils a little bit and see if I can get the 532 at the very end of the range. And then we'll remeasure the top one again and see what we can go down to. Okay, there. So now I have it twiddled all the way in, and um, I slid the coils down a little bit further this way. So now we are 
uh, at the maximum, 534. Okay, so let me unscrew our adjuster knob and I'll see how, how low we can get with the low inductance end because it should be a little bit lower if the coils are situated further away. Okay. Okay, so now I have the uh, coil twiddled all the way out. Okay. And it looks like we're down to, oh, 69. So what was it? It was like 79 before, so that's 10 microhenries less. So yes, we do have a better range now with our, uh, with our uh, giant, giant inductor here. Okay. Anyway, very interesting. Anyway, here's our giant inductor here. This is uh, Dr. Jane's, and thanks for watching.